All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and I'm going to be sharing with you the electroplating zinc onto copper video two. All right, so about a year ago, I released a video on how to put zinc onto copper using household chemicals like magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt, and a few other chemicals. So please watch that video if you want to make the bath. That hasn't changed. Um, it's still laid out really well, and all the chemistry is there and everything. So I'll put that video in the data uh, description below. This video is to update you on the chemistry of the cleanup, um, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on uh, other chemicals. So this only works if you are electro plating zinc onto an electroformed ring or jewelry or something like that. If you don't have that, um, what will happen is you will have to do some cleanup because the copper has to have a nice um, oh, rough type of surface, um, lightly rough surface in order for the plating to stick very well. Okay, so chemical etching it using muriatic acid is required. But if you're not doing that, if you're electroforming, and electroforming is basically, you know, taking a ring or making a ring, for example, this is straight out of the bath and sticking it in there and putting a zinc coating on it so that it looks like that. So, hold on, got my lights here. There we go. Here's what's been updated. You might have one of these tanks. They have rings in it, or jewelry of some nature. When they come out of this bath, you just hose them off with a little bit of tap water and they can immediately go into the tank. Okay, You do not have to use muriatic acid or electrostripum or anything like that anymore. Uh, that's as long as the surface is turning out that light pink. So if you're unfamiliar with that, let's say you put brightener in here. Yeah, brightener works and you know how, what happens with brightener it's it's a big waste of money to be honest with you. Brightener is nice, but you're going to end up polishing these anyway. In this case, it's to the benefit that they are not polished. So in the previous video, I said something about being polished. Polishing actually makes it so the electroplating doesn't stick as well. So it's really good to have that that pink like that. So immediately when they come out of that, hose them off with water, and they go into this tank. This tank is now being powered not by one of these. So don't waste your money on one of these if you're using zinc. It doesn't go low enough on the milliamps. So you need about 500 milliamps, five volts, for the one gallon solution. A really good source of that is a cell phone charger. 5 volts, 1,000 milliamps. By the actual time it reaches the solution, it loses about 500 milliamps. So 5 volts, 1,000 milliamps. Standard cell phone charger. You hook the positive here, and you hook the negative here. About five minutes, and you get a nice coating of zinc. All right, now this one's been sitting in there five minutes, so what I want to do is show you what to do It's like carding is concerned. So I used to card using steel wool. That took too long, especially if you're making a lot of these rings. So what you do, you take it out of the solution, you take some paper towel, clean paper towel, just dab it off. It's going to turn like a snow white immediately. OK. 
Okay, you can kind of see that. There's no shine to this whatsoever. Let me get some better lighting in here. Let's try that. Yeah, it's very matte, so ugly. Dremel. Harbor Freight sells these stainless steel brushes for your Dremel. Uh, with all Harbor Freight things, please wear safety glasses. Um, these little wires right here have been known to fly everywhere. So, if you are getting these things at Harbor Freight, watch it. <laughs> I found one stuck in a piece of wood uh, about a foot away over on my workbench one time. Tell me that wouldn't hurt if it hit the eye. And you can see this is getting super shiny. Mega shine. My new lab is not very good with the lighting, so there you go. Cool. So that is the updated process for electroplating zinc onto copper. Now you can do that two or three times to get a strong enough bond to it, but really, you know, a good way to test it, here's a solder pick. You can go like that and scratch it if you wanted to. Um, it's really thick on there. so. The thing is, you have to card it about every five minutes, two or three times to get a sufficient enough buildup of zinc because it's electroplating, it's not electroforming. Okay? There's a difference. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, no more chemicals like um, muric acid, which is still handy. Let's say you screw this up, right? I want to take the, the zinc off of it. You dip it into muric acid and it will immediately strip all the zinc off of it within seconds. But that's only if you want to remove the zinc. Now you might want to play around with things like you can electroplate other things on top of zinc now. Like silver for example. It's a very, it's a very handy metal. Um, copper to silver is kind of skeptical but zinc to silver is pretty easy. You don't have to do too much cleanup here. You can go immediately from, you wear gloves, do the card, and from the card, you can go in there. Right now, I could not put silver on this because I touched it with my hands, so the grease from my hands. Uh, silver is a little bit sensitive to the oils from your hands. So if I was wearing nitro gloves, did the card with this, I can then immediately go into the silver. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's eight minutes long of me babbling, but I just want to save you a little bit of cash with the, the chemicals. So enjoy.